Hello and welcome to the Pennsylvania Association of College and Mission Counseling College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but we'll be around for the entire session to answer any questions you may have. My name is Jenny and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. However, you can use a Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Pennsylvania. I now like to turn it over to our first school, St. John's College. See. Hi, uh, my name is Randall Hollinsby. I'm from St. John's College. Let me uh, get this going for you. Share screen. Perfect. Let's do uh, a slideshow. Hmm. All right, we'll just do it this way. Um, I'm an associate director of admissions at St. John's College. Uh, we are one college with two campuses. We are in Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, and we've been there since 1696. We are also located in Santa Fe, New Mexico at the southern tip of the Rockies. Uh, the college is best known for our great books program. Uh, we have only one major. It's a liberal arts major. All of our classes are discussion classes, no lecture classes at all, no little desks that face front. Uh, we only study primary sources. We don't use any textbooks at all. If you are looking for uh, a small college experience, St. John's is probably perfect for you. Uh, we're going to have 100 and, uh, uh, 450 undergrads uh, on each campus. Uh, we usually start with about 150 freshmen at the beginning of the year. Uh, our average class size is 10 and we have a seven to one student to teacher ratio. We are roughly 50-50 female male and 20% of our students are international and another 20% identify as students of color. In 2019, uh, thanks to a generous donation from our alumni, we cut our tuition from 52,000 to 35,000, it's about 36 now. On top of that, we offer merit scholarships and generous need-based financial aid. So you might say, what do students do with uh, an unusual education like this? 32% um, go into education, 25% into business and media, 10% into STEM, and the other 33% go into a wide range of careers. Uh, we send 12% uh, of our graduates into law and nearly that many into medicine. In fact, uh, since 2012, everyone who applied to law school from St. John's was accepted, which is about 20 times the national average. I encourage you to read about us in the uh, Princeton Review, uh, US News and World Report and Forbes.com. There are great write-ups about the college. We are proud members of the Colleges That Change Lives group. Uh, and um, I haven't said anything that's really fun sounding so far. Uh, so I'll switch to fun. College ought to be at least a, a little bit fun. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
we lean toward individual sports. We're not D1, D2, or D3 anything. Um, we tend toward things like fencing, crew and sailing, rock climbing, skiing, cycling, uh, chess, go, video, and board games. Uh, our favorite edition of Dungeons and Dragons right now is fifth edition. And of course, we continue our dominance of collegiate croquet. Uh, and that's what croquet looks like pretty much every year. Uh, we are on the Common App and Coalition App. We have no application fee, and we are still taking applications for the fall of 2022. We've been test optional for more than 40 years. And finally, our great bridge program helped us become just one of 28 first gen forward schools in the country. Here is my contact information. And uh, I know it says director of international recruitment, but I've been doing this for 22 years. So I'm uh, perfectly happy to answer any sort of questions you can come up with. That's about it. Thank you so much, Randall. We appreciate it. And that's a great um, reminder to all of our participants that you can use that Q&A function if you have questions for any of our institutions here throughout the presentations. Up next, we have Thomas Jefferson University. Hey guys, nice to be here with you. Let me get shared. Um, my name is Megan. I'm Associate Director of Admissions here at Jefferson. Um, Jefferson is just outside the city of Philadelphia. You'll see on this screen um, that we are talking about the East Falls campus today because the East Falls campus is specific to our undergrad students. So we do have a couple of different campuses, but keep in mind that if you're applying out of high school, you are applying into the East Falls campus. Um, and like I said, so it is in the, the city of Philadelphia. We do have a Philly address, uh, but we are about a 15 minute drive outside of Center City. So it is not an urban campus. We are definitely very green, very suburban, very safe, a lot quieter than being in the middle of the city all the time but our students do use the city. Um, they go into the city for fun, to go to museums, to go shopping, um, to look for internships, to look for jobs. So we do want you to use the city for as much as you'd like. And there is a bus that picks up and drops off and goes directly into Center City from the East Falls campus. So it's pretty um, convenient for you guys. We have a little over 100 acres out there. Again, very green and it's very traditional style campus where all of the buildings are there together. We have about 2,800 students who go to school in, on the East Falls campus. So our class sizes are around 12 or 13 people. When we're talking about a class that's directly related to your major, they're 12, 13 or lower. If you're talking about like a gen ed at Jefferson, those are about 30 people, but we are not a lecture hall school. So you are going to be in traditional classrooms for all of your different classes. This is a big, scary slide. These are all of our different undergrad programs that are open to students who are applying out of high school. I'm not gonna go through all of these, but I do wanna give you an idea of the breadth of things that we offer. So on the left, you're gonna see our architecture, business and design programs, um, anywhere from architecture to interior design, to fashion design, industrial design, international business, things like that. Middle and right are going to be more of our health and science related programs, with the exception of the top right, which is the, the liberal arts side of Jefferson. Um, if you see a program here with a little like equation after it, so it's a three plus two or a three plus three, those are accelerated dual degrees. So if you are admitted as a student in high school into one of these programs, you do have a seat in the grad program attached to it as well. And you just have to maintain a minimum GPA requirement. We tell you what that is in your acceptance letter and take the prerequisites for that. Um, but you do have the seat, you never need to worry about reapplying for it. We have a 97% success rate. So what that means is that within six months of graduation, you are either gainfully employed or enrolled in the graduate program of your choice. Um, so career services does exist on campus and works with our students on reviewing resumes, working on interviewing skills, um, giving direction in trying to find internships or first time jobs. And the same thing is also true for our professors because for the most part, our professors are still working within the field that they teach. So their networks are very fresh and they know people who hire and they can really start to help make you help you make valuable connections early on. 
So I talked a little bit about East Falls. So we've got two different environments, really. We've got the East Falls environment, which was, again, like much more of a small town feel just around the corner from Maniunk, if you're familiar with that area. So very walkable, some farmer's markets, some cute cafes, things like that. But again, you could hop on the bus, share an Uber. Surely you will have a friend with a car on campus and you could be in Philly in minutes um, or King of Prussia, things like that. So it is more of a build your own type of experience. So you can be in the city for as much as you would like to be in the city for, um, or you spend all of your time on campus and you will always have things to do. And speaking of things to do, these are a couple of examples for you guys. Um, so these are, we're gonna have over 160 different clubs for you to join, but I've broken it into some categories to just be helpful. So for the most part, all of our majors will have some professional component you guys can be a part of as well to not only make inroads for your career, but also just to meet upperclassmen in your program. Lots of different social groups on campus as well with a little bit of Greek life. We do have two fraternities and two sororities on campus. Community service, very, very popular. So is fitness. We have intramural sports and varsity sports. And we'll talk about those in a second. Most of our students do study abroad. Even the students in the accelerated programs have time to study abroad. Um, and we do also have an honors program where everyone who's admitted to the university is evaluated for the honors program. So there's no separate application for that. We are D2 school, so all of these different sports we give athletic scholarships for. So if you have questions about this process, let Jefferson know, let admissions know. We can help demystify the process for you guys and help you recruit for the sport that you're excited about. And I want to give you an idea of how financial aid works with us. So we do give merit aid and we give need-based aid. Your merit scholarship is awarded to you in your acceptance letter. And then on top of that, so those, those merit scholarships are anywhere from like thirteen dollars to $26,000 per year while you're at Jefferson. Um, need-based is given on top of that as long as you submit your FAFSA. Anything else we could possibly give you will be, will be thrown in there on top of the scholarship you already have. Uh, and then just to give you an idea of the cost of attendance for this school year, um, for resident students, it's 58915 We are private, so it doesn't matter if you're in-state versus out-of-state. Um, and that's just to give you an idea. And the cost of attendance is everything but textbooks. So it is tuition, it is room and board, um, it is everything but textbooks. So I want you guys to know. I want to make sure my timer doesn't go off and scare me in front of you guys. Um, we do have an open house coming up this Saturday. So come and see us if you're in the area. Um, this is specific to students who are applying for next year. So this is a really fun time to come and meet professors and meet students, take a tour, have lunch. It's a really fun time. And then this is our contact info. If you have any questions at all, I will also put this in the chat, but we have the enroll at jefferson.edu email address. Some deadlines there for you guys to keep in mind, early action, November 1st, regular decision, March 1st, and there's only one program with a different deadline, and that is the PA program, which is December 1st. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Up next, we have Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, this is Brandon Weiss. I'm with the Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics. We are an aircraft maintenance training school, and uh, we're a little bit different uh, when it comes to our program. Uh, you can see uh, that basically we offer something called an airframe and power plant certification. That means that basically you are certified to work on anything that Lies. So you can work on planes, helicopters, drones, airships, rockets, missiles, satellites. We work with metal, fabric, composite material. We do jet, piston, and rocket engines. Uh, the certification means that you do take an exam. And when you take an exam, basically, uh, once, you cert once you pass that exam, uh, you're allowed to work on anything in the air. We're going to talk about that coming up as well. Uh, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, the program, you can see some of the uh, some of the equipment they're working on there from jet engines to piston engines. We do sheet metal work. So this is very different than a college degree for sure. Uh, again, when you come out in 21 months, you're ready to go to work full time as an aircraft technician. If you'd like to go to uh, if you'd like to go to PIA.edu forward slash learn more and or scan the QR code or uh, you can go down to the ninth entry there and you can see PAC. 427 2022 and put your information there. I will put that uh, slide back up again at the end of the presentation. Uh, we've been doing this for over 90 years, actually 93 years. We're the second uh, oldest school in the country. We're ranked the number one two-year trade school in the nation by Forbes magazine. 
based on some very good things that you see there from graduate success to affordability, completion success, and student experience. So we're very proud of that. If you go to our Instagram page, you can see uh, we work on some pretty cool stuff. Uh, again, on the right, you'll see some of our students and some of the equipment that you're working on. On the left is some of our graduates. So you can see this is very hands-on. We work with equipment, okay? We work with tools. We take them apart and we put them back together. And when you get on a plane uh, someday, you hope that someone has come to a school like PIA and make sure and make sure that that plane is safe to fly. That's basically what we do. We train aircraft technicians on how to keep anything in the air flying safely. So we have four campuses. Pittsburgh's been our main campus since 1929. We have one in Youngstown, Ohio since 2006. We have one in Hagerstown, Maryland since 2011, and also Myrtle Beach, South Carolina since 2012. Now the world of aviation is probably bigger than you might think. As an example, I'm sure most of us are familiar with commercial aviation. Uh, we have people working for American Airlines, United Airlines, uh, Southwest, as, as well as Delta. Uh, pays very well, free travel for the whole family. We have people working in manufacturing for Boeing. So you can work for Boeing as well, building uh, big commercial aircraft, working for them. They pay for a four-year degree. If that's your goal, you can go to school for two years and have Boeing pay for a, uh, a four-year degree, a master's, and even a PhD. We have people working for the military as well. Uh, Lockheed Martin comes in and hires on a regular basis uh, for our graduates to build these uh, very expensive military aircraft. We have people working for Gulfstream, building these uh, $85 million corporate jets. We have people working for FedEx in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, uh, on these cargo planes that uh, help move all the goods that you and I are buying online. And we have people working for Stat Medevac. Uh, these helicopters save lives every day, as well as working for uh, General Atomics, uh, which builds drones for the military. So again, they're located in San Diego, California. We also have people working for NASA, as well as SpaceX. Uh, SpaceX recently hired a young lady called Elizabeth Householder. Uh, she was hired in August uh, without experience, came right out of school after just 16 months of training. And today she's in Texas working on for SpaceX building rocket engines. So we're not a big university. Uh, again, the, some of the universities you saw already, fantastic schools to go to. Uh, we're a little bit different. We work with uh, engines and sheet metal, welding, electricity, electronics, hydraulics. Uh, you come out with a very specific skill set that I would say about, uh, well, I would say most of us probably don't have anymore. Uh, very highly needed. There's about 28,000 commercial flights a day. Every one of them requires a certified aircraft technician. So very possible maybe in the next 10 years or so, uh, you might find yourself sitting in an airport and getting a notice saying, guess what? Your flight's been canceled due to a lock, lack of aircraft technicians. So uh, salaries are going up. Uh, as an example, last year, there were about 63,000 uh, for the middle income or medium income, this year it's 66000 So it went up $3,000 just in one year. Major shortage in the field, you can see uh, a bunch of older people, 63% over the age of 50, 30% uh, between 30 and 50, and then younger people under the age of 30, just 7% major, major opportunities for anyone interested in the field. The whole world is experiencing the same problem, according to Boeing, uh, between 2021 and 2040. Uh, there's going to need about 140 132,000 aircraft technicians needed just in the airline industry. So again, when it comes to our program, air, uh, aviation maintenance technology, again, you can see 21 months at the Pittsburgh School, 16 at the other. You can work on sheet metal and welding, composite materials, hydraulics, pneumatics, jet, piston and rocket engines, power generation and ignition systems. And you can see some of the uh, employers for the top five employers there, and then the top five employers for the Youngstown campus. So you can work on smaller planes, helicopters, drones, airships, anything that's in the air. We place in 38 states, including Alaska and Hawaii. Uh, we have jobs from Cleveland all the way down the coast to Florida, Texas, San Diego, Los Angeles, and Seattle, Washington. So uh, I think that is about it. If anyone's interested, like I said, you can go to pia.edu forward slash learn more or scan the QR code and put your information there on the ninth entry at PAC. 427-2022. So thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. And a reminder to all of our participants that you can use the Q&A function on your screen to ask questions of any of our institutions here during the presentations. Up next, we have University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Greetings, everyone.
My name is Lori Smith Watson. I'm delighted to be here with everyone this morning or this evening rather um, from a very sunny afternoon in the suburbs of Baltimore. UMBC is located uh, about 10 minutes drive south of the city of Baltimore uh, in a very suburban area. We're a campus of about 500 acres. And we have, as you can see from the fast facts on my screen here, uh, about 11,000 undergraduate students. We also have um, about 3,000 graduate students, uh, but I am assuming most of our audience is interested in applying um, after they finish their high school education and would be coming into our bachelor's degree programs. Uh, so we've got more than 100 different academic programs at UMBC and combining these programs in majors, minors, or majors certificates um, is a very common theme at UMBC. Some of our popular majors uh, we've listed here on the screen include computer science, biological sciences, uh, mechanical engineering, computer engineering, chemical and environmental engineering. We offer degrees in theater and theater studies, in dance and music, in several areas of visual arts, including graphic design and cinematic arts. Um, we have quite a number of studies, interdisciplinary social studies majors, including the very popular media and communication studies, and uh, psychology is one of our most popular majors. Many students at UMBC are planning to go on for advanced education beyond the bachelor's degree. Um, sometimes that would include pre-professional study in order to prepare for going on for an MBA or going on to dental school, law school, medical school, nursing school, physical therapy school, pharmacy school, et cetera. So we have honed our skills in helping students to prepare for that. Most of those schools, as a matter of fact, most employers uh, are interested in our graduates because there's an opportunity while studying to do applied learning through internships and research experiences as well. Our mascot is the Chesapeake Bay Retriever, which just so happens to be the state dog of Maryland. Um, and we call him True Grit, as you can see in this little photo. Uh, and he's always there to cheer on all of our NCAA D1 teams and comes out for a lot of our recreation activities and our mural activities and club sports programs too. So where is UMBC? We are located, as I mentioned, just south of the city of Baltimore, just five miles from uh, Thurgood Marshall, Baltimore, Washington International Airport and about a 40 minute drive from Washington, DC. In order to learn more, about UMBC, one of the ways that we'd love for you to do that is to connect with our students um, through some of the opportunities that you see listed on our screen. We offer tour sessions and black and gold tours. Um, our colors are black and gold. Um, we offer those opportunities for visiting on a daily basis and most Saturdays as well. Uh, there's an opportunity for you to connect with an admissions counselor wherever you are in your college search, where you, whether you've just begun looking, whether you've already formulated your list, and uh, you're the student who's going to ask us, when can I apply for fall 23? Uh, the answer to that is August 1st. We are a common application school. So we do hope that you'll come to visit. Um, speaking of applying, so... Uh, before we know it, we'll blink a couple of times uh, and it will be approaching late summer and fall. And we'd really love for you to apply early in order to have best opportunities at not only admission, but funding as well. So looking forward, and I should mention in case we have a wide variety of guests with us this evening, that we are still accepting applications for both transfer and first year uh, admission for fall 22. Um, you would simply access the common application and the instructions that are at undergraduate.umbc.edu 
Looking forward to fall 23, um, please know that we are test optional. We are going to spend a lot of time with your common application and your official high school transcript. Um, we are also, of course, going to be interested in your letter of recommendation and list of activities. Please do be sure to tell us a lot about yourself. So your list of activities can of course include things that you might be involved in through your school, but think larger and broader. What do you do in your community, within your family? How do you spend your spare time? Um, perhaps you're very interested in sciences, but you're an artist. Um, tell us about those things as well. Our early action or priority deadline is a non-binding deadline, and that is November 1st for the following fall. And then the regular decision deadline is February 1st. We absolutely do offer scholarships and financial aid, and I look forward to your questions in the Q&A and to hearing from you after tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Up next, we have Holy Family University. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Tim O'Driscoll. I'm one of the assistant directors of undergraduate admissions at Holy Family University. Uh, so I'll be taking you through this brief presentation today. Um, and again, if you have any questions, drop them in the chat box below. Okay, whoops. All right, so just a little bit about who we are. We were founded in 1954 by the Sisters of the Holy Family of Nazareth hence the name Holy Family University, and we gained university status in 2002. Uh, today, our average incoming class is about 350. Our original incoming class was only 17 students, so we do like to um, kind of highlight, you know, where we've, where we've gone, uh, been and where we're going. Um, and in 2005, our residence life, life program was reestablished, so all of our uh, housing options are brand new as of 2005. We're rented, brand new or renovated. Uh, in terms of academics at Holy Family, uh, we are a smaller school, so you're going to see that reflected through your academic career at Holy Family. Um, the average uh, class size is 16. We have over 30 different majors and 20 minors. Every student receives one-on-one -on -one faculty advising, and everyone is available to take uh, advantage of our career planning resources that are available on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And all of our students or either required or encouraged to participate in internship or field experience, depending on your specific major. Uh, student life at Holy Family. So we do like to talk about, um, you know, what you're going to do while you're a student at Holy Family. We have both on and off campus programming through our student engagement office, our residence life, and the various uh, registered student organizations and honor societies that exist on campus. Uh, Holy Family does have a few traditions, one of which I'll name is Breakfast of Champions. It's a big breakfast buffet that happens um, the last night before final start for the semester. So it's just a really fun uh, way to kick back and relax before you get into um, studying for your finals uh, at the end of the semester. We do currently offer three different housing styles, um, suite style living, apartments, and singles. And then we are an NCAA Division II uh, school, so um, our students are uh, do compete uh, and uh, are eligible for scholarship money. All right, so the freshman application, uh, we are rolling admissions, which means that we do, we are still accepting applications for fall 2022. We have our own application. We're also on the Common App. We have no application fee. The only required information we need for your transcript or for your application is your official high school transcript. And then SAT and ACT scores are not required. If you choose to send them, we have a do no harm policy, which means if we factor them in and they benefit your application, we'll use them. If they don't, we won't look at them. Uh, the average GPA for our incoming students is a 3.1 and the average SAT is a 1020. 
So uh, affordability is a big topic uh, now. 100% um, of our first time freshmen new students receive financial aid. Um, you'll see our, our tuition and fees are listed there. The room and board is just an estimate of kind of the mid range of where you would expect um, that cost to come in at. The FAFSA opens up October 1st. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're filing that October 1st and then Holy Family is one of the lowest net cost private universities in the Philadelphia area. So that's something we're very proud of. And the first line of, of that financial aid that you're gonna see is the Merit Scholarship. That's an academic scholarship that's awarded at acceptance and the freshman scholarships range from 12 to $21,000. All right, so outcomes. Some of our popular majors at Holy Family include nursing, education, biology, we see our biology students continue into research. We see them continue into med school, vet school, PA school, PT school, you name it, um, psychology. And our school of business uh, is producing some really great outcomes. So we're really proud of our students that are graduating from the school of business um, in our accounting programs and our sports marketing management. So we do offer some continuation options at Holy Family where you can graduate with your bachelor's and master's degree in either five or six years. Um, we've been named a value all-star by Money Magazine for a number of years. And the Chronicle of Education, the Chronicle of Higher Education named us as a top 10 school for salaries after graduation. And the university currently has over 500 different employer partners. So next steps, if you're a high school senior that hasn't applied yet, you would certainly apply today. If you're a high school junior, you'll be able to apply um, as of August 1st. And then next, we'd love to have you schedule a visit. And then if we're on your short list of schools that you plan to attend, um, we want you to come back and shadow a class. If you have any other questions, feel free to drop them in the chat box or uh, send us an email at admissions at holyfamily.edu. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of our institutions here for letting us know more about your schools. Uh, we have some time for some Q&A, so we'll go ahead and ask everyone to come back on camera at this point, um, and we will have some time for a Q&A. Our first question for the evening is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? We'll go in the um, same order, starting with St. John's College. So I think um, if you've narrowed it down at all, you have to visit campus uh, if you can. Uh, you've got to see classes. You've got to see how, uh, how it feels for you. See dorm rooms, eat the food. Um, and St. John's believes that's very important, uh, so important that uh, we'll reimburse uh, $500 for your trip to Santa Fe, $300 for your trip to, uh, I mean, don't take a Learjet, but uh, for your trip to Annapolis. Uh, you just have to visit wherever your, you know, the last three schools, you got to visit. I think for me, I always say the same thing when someone asks me this, but um, study what you would like to study, you know, search for what you're interested in and what you're passionate about. It is okay um, to take recommendations from other people, from your parents, from your aunts, from your uncles, um, but ultimately pick something that you would like to do with your life. And ultimately you're also responsible for paying for going to school. It's gonna be a big deal. So I want you to be studying what you want to study and not necessarily what other people want you to study. So that's important, be thinking about yourself. Yeah, uh, when it comes to picking a school, of course, it's very important that you visit the campus. Again, uh, I know in my daughter's case, we looked at seven schools. You get on a campus, sometimes it feels right, sometimes it doesn't, okay? You can just love the campus the first time you see it. That's what happened with her. She uh, picked a school uh, based on, uh, she just felt that this was the place she belonged. So I recommend that for sure. And of course, uh, getting into a field that you're gonna enjoy doing for the rest of your life, or at least let's say part of that. So that's the, probably the best defense I can give. I'd say early on, 
keep your options wide open. Um, if a school intrigues you, consider them. Don't look immediately at the price tag. You've learned a lot about scholarship and opportunities and how much funding is out there this evening. Um, don't write something off because it's far away or too close. Um, keep a, a, a wide option here at the beginning of creating your list uh, and then allow a little wiggle room. Um, don't apply to 20 schools. That's extraordinarily way too many. Um, but when you are at that application stage, uh, remember to keep in mind um, that you might want to save a spot just in case you discover someone later on down the way. My advice is always get to know your admissions counselor. Uh, you're going to have a lot of questions as you move your way through the uh, application process, the college search process, and you're going to want to lean on your admissions counselor at each school that you're applying to. My job is not to get you to come to Holy Family. My job is to help you figure out if Holy Family is the right fit. So, um, you know, use your admissions counselor as a resource to answer any questions you have. And it's a one-stop shop pipeline for getting what you need when you need it. That's all great advice. Um, I always like to chime in here too and say to stay organized. Um, you'll get so many different, there's so many different dates and deadlines, um, both for applications and scholarships. You'll get so many emails. So um, I suggest, you know, creating a spreadsheet or something that you can keep um, easily accessible that you can say, oh, okay, this is when uh, St. John's College priority deadline is, or this is when, you know, Thomas Jefferson University has uh, a scholarship due. And so you can really keep that, um, you know, all together to stay organized. And same thing with your emails, have a professional sounding email that you're using to apply. And that way you're not getting your like spam emails coming in, you know, along with important decision emails as well. Oh, Jenny, can I add one more thing that's really important, maybe a little bit later on down the line? I love your email idea. When you're communicating, um, it's okay to reiterate your name. You, you really should reiterate your name later in the process um, when you've applied. Uh, if you've been given um, a portal access or, or some sort of a, um, an ID from the institution you've applied to, it's really good to throw that into the communication as well. Um, those admissions counselors you're gonna be relying on closely are working with a lot of students. Great advice, thank you. Thank you for adding that. All right, we have time for another question. Um, so what is one thing you want students to remember about your school? You get another um, time to just give us, give us that uh, quick something you want everyone to leave remembering um, about your school. And we'll go in that same order. Uh, St. John's is all discussion classes. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is all that homework you did in high school, there's very little, uh, there are no handouts, there are no quizzes, there's only one algebra test you could pass right now. The rest of St. John's is read a book, come to class, have something interesting to say about it, now and then write a paper. It's a very personal experience. For Jefferson, it's definitely that um, we are more than health. We are absolutely health. We are lots of health. Um, but the other half of our students, which is a lot of people, um, are interested in architecture, in fashion, in textiles, industrial design, um, business. So those programs are alive and thriving. And because we're Jefferson, sometimes it's like, oh, the hospital, um, which we also are. But remember the other half of us, too. Yeah, um, with us, it's kind of hard for us to compete, like I said, when it comes to all these great colleges. Uh, but like I said, being a technical school, the thing that uh, basically we like people to remember is it's not too much time. It's not too long. You know, it's not too long. It's not too expensive. And you come out. And right now, when it comes to what we do, which is aircraft maintenance, uh, unfortunately, there's a major shortage out there, which is going to affect all of us eventually. But uh, when it comes to anyone who wants to fly, that we are actually averaging three to five offers per student. Uh, again, uh, sometimes we'll have 40 employers come in to hire and we'll have 20 students graduate. Okay. So like I said, in the technical fields, it's a little bit different than these four colleges, which are fantastic to go to. I mean, I wish I could go to, um, what is it? Uh, the first school, St. John's. I wish I would have gone there. Sounds great. 
But at the same time, uh, like I said, the technical school, short, sweet, and pretty much uh, work available when you come out. So what I want you to remember about UMBC is community. The image that is serving as my virtual background um, are flags that hang in our student union, the commons, and they represent the students at UMBC and where they've come from. Many international students, but also uh, many first generation UMBC students and, and our community is incredibly vital to us. And that's how students connect and how they succeed. Uh, I was uh, checking, we just, we just announced that we're uh, doing episodes on the college tour. Um, so that's a good way to kind of virtually check things out. Um, and it was fascinating to me how each student spiel just reemphasized that community. Uh, so what you'll commonly hear people joke about is family is our middle name. And when you come to Holy Family, that's really what you get. Um, our campus minister likes to joke, once you're in, there's no getting out. Um, not in a cultish way, but, you know, um, as you're going through your four years at Holy Family, we have every resource available to you. The biggest thing is asking for help. We have all the resources, all the people available to help. But if you don't ask, we don't know. So treat us like your family ask for help, and we'll be there to support you through the next four years of your uh, educational journey. Fantastic, thank you. And we have time for one more question. So I'll just open this up if, if anyone has something that they want to share here. Um, what is one myth that you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? So I know, you know not everyone may have uh, an answer for this one. So if you want to, uh, we won't go in a specific order. You can just Go ahead if there's a myth you'd like to debunk. I'd like to jump in and say, I think one of the predominant myths out there right now is that it's so hard to get in. Um, we put on our, our websites what our acceptance rate is. Um, and many, many, many more of us are accepting more of our applicants than not. Um, so sometimes just a few tiny little really, really super exclusive selective schools um, are the word on the street. So, so assume you're going to get an admission letter. I think for me, it's, um, you know, real people are gonna read your application. I'm, I'm sure that you'll apply to some schools that are, that are enormous. That might not be true everywhere, right? Um, but real people read your essay, real people read your recommendation letters. Um, if you have questions, you can ask a real person those questions. And um, I am here, you know, answering emails and answering phone calls. So don't think that you are sending your application into the void. Um, someone is going to read it, a real person, and someone will reply to your question if you ask it. So don't be afraid to do that. So there's a, uh, a secret part of the application that most students don't know about. Uh, it's a little box that we can see. It's the demonstrated interest box. Uh, if, if you get to know uh, Megan and Tim and Brandon and Lori, and especially me, uh, we can bend pretty much all of the rules for you. They're, those rules belong to us. Uh, if you just throw your application into the wind and hope it goes well, uh, well, good luck with that. Uh, but Megan can Megan can fix the problems that you have when when you apply to Thomas Jefferson. So uh, it's not it's not as hard as it seems. Fantastic. Anyone else have anything they'd like to chime in? Yeah, I, my advice is always don't let the, and it's funny coming from us because our tuition's pretty low. Um, don't let the sticker price of a school deter you from applying. Um, I was sitting at a table at a conference once and all of the, my colleagues that were sitting around the table were talking about the tuition and talking about how they were all over $60,000. At the time, I think we were 29. Uh, now we're 32 and some change, but um, the, the listed price is not what you pay for school. 
So don't let the tuition price deter you from applying. There's a whole scholarship financial aid process you're going to go through and you have a while before you figure out what it's going to cost for you to attend each school. So use it to factor into your final decision, the cost, the net cost, but don't let the sticker price deter you from applying to a school. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, then um, we will close out our session for the evening. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you to all of our schools for joining us. And thank you, um, participants, for listening as well. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five-question survey. So we'd really appreciate any feedback that you can provide. And we encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions that are happening right after this one. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Pennsylvania. Thank you so much and best of luck on your college search process.